Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. don't need to be here guys but what is up welcome to interview with a man episode number 376 how a loser lives his life this is part three in the edition of today's little series it kind of got a little longer you know been running a little bit longer than i expected it to uh because quite frankly um Nothing but good news has been coming in for me, and uh, I just, I mean, Bitcoin going up, Ethereum going up, Body Language Mastery jam-packed, man. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The thing after thing is just going better and better and better and better, okay? Let me just, let me just show you guys something real quick. Take a look at this, all right? Real, real quick. All right, so this is the uh, educational format for, uh, for the upcoming uh, Masculine Empowerment Network this uh, upcoming week. So this is for you guys in Body Language Mastery, so don't forget, if you enrolled at any time during the entire 2020 year, you are entitled to all this education for free, okay? So this week is literally jam-packed with private educational sessions. We have... Monday, which is today, um, after this show in the morning, Aaron Clary is going to be in the webinars with us, getting talking about getting your financial shit together. Uh, Ryan Christensen from HypnosisForMen.com is going to be doing mindset uh, tools. And then Troy Francis is the double header. So Tuesday morning, he's going to do day game infields. And then Wednesday, he's going to do fashion. Troy's fashion presentation is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Apex Mindset is going to do running harems and managing women. Uh, that's Tuesday night. Red Pill Thor is going to be doing Becoming a Durable Man. He actually was struck by lightning and almost killed. And he's going to talk about his story and how he used his, you know, just sheer willpower to survive and, and just, you know, become an awesome leader of men. Uh, Sterling Cooper, the AM, is going to be doing sex advice Q&A because he is a adult film star, porn star, banging them out. I saw some raunchy ass video Sterling sent me the other day in the private telegram chat. Good lord. 
I should not have seen that filth, but good lord, there are levels to degeneracy in this game. I'm just, as you can see, I'm just a crypto degenerate with uh, my custom shirt I had made today uh, in the fashion district of Tokyo, Harajuku, by a good friend, my man Yuto, awesome guy, and a shout out to my man Masaya. Uh, <clears throat> Thursday night, Afi Kingdom Dominant Mindset, and then Friday, yours truly, Friday morning, I'm going to talk about female archetypes featuring the Netflix series Bling Empire. So if you guys want to catch up with me and you're the Body Language Mastery Group, Bling Ep Empire, Episode 1. I'm going to do a breakdown on these females in this uh, live documentary kind of uh, reality TV show. God, these bitches are fucking psychos. And then Friday night, uh, we're rounding off with Wraith, and he is doing um, life planning and careers. You would see Wraith commonly uh, here on Dude Party. So, we've, we've got a jam-packed uh, week, and we got a jam-packed uh, crypto portfolio. Guys, if you join my community, you are no stranger to winning. And I know... I know for some of you guys, you maybe feel you get lucky, or you may feel like you know the well is going to dry up eventually. I assure you that is not going to happen. What happened is this: you used to be a loser, and then you got on the internet. You started looking for answers. You started finding some mentors. You started taking action, and boom! Now you're in the community. Now you're directly communicating with other men like you around the world because the Hot Dude Army is a global network okay and in this global network it is a network of winners and we are determined to make a lot of money to make a lot of muscles and learn a lot of game because man sex is great i just had some furious makeup sex with one of my girls like it's chinese chick oh my god i just love fighting her because the makeup sex is just worth it every time it is fiery it is just like passionate like the, the hatred is so strong that it it just channels into like the most beautiful lust uh yes yeah, it was good it was good big daddy mld you can't <laughs> you can't fake this smile on my face life is good and if you're in my community i know you're enjoying this okay if you're in the community of winners all right if you're in the masculine empowerment network if you're part of salt if you're part of pandemic pickup if you're part of body language mastery you know you're sitting there with a smile on your face as well, all right? So uh, we're going to talk about just uh, how not to be like us, how to be a loser. We're going to wrap up this one. Today and tomorrow, gonna, we're going to wrap up the How to Be a Loser. Honestly, the series has run a little bit uh, later than, um, than I've anticipated. However, the reception for the series plus Dude Party, uh, it's just... it's. Uh, it's it's just fantastic the the it's it's really nice to come back after taking such a long break and i don't, I don't have a lot of channel momentum right now but there's so many diehards i'm people are joining i think we had over 10 people sign up for the patreon already um the consultations are keep coming in body language mastery tenants is up i mean charlie's uh tenants is up as well for the crypto mindset like everything is just on fire right now so we're going to keep the momentum going uh shout out to everybody in the chat with some of my members uh know your worth dylan what is up what is up um harry Zikos, what's up uh let's see sarah joseph butte what is up my man frederico what's up big guy um we pop bottles this summer oh god i'm staying away from clubs this year but i'll take you to a nice steak dinner uh infamous rifle what is up cody mouse again what is up he says man i, I what cody mouse says man i'm glad i got into bitcoin long position 7k ago holy shit yeah welcome welcome to the big daddy big bucks uh frederico my man with the uh 696 japanese yen that's about six seven bucks thank you so much that's gonna pop up here soon i didn't time it because i'm just ahead of the game today mm. all right let's get you down to the business yeah there it is right thank now. you so much buddy you're a beta male you're a cuck it's a little you're late on uh life on their behalf thousand dollars a donation but right uh now. <laughs> the money is here thank you so much 696 if you guys want to join the hot dude army and be able to throw some bitcoin emojis in the chat uh one more thing shout out to my very like my one of my old time friends who we have recently reconnected uh due to the power of bitcoin uh, my man bill is the fucking man bill i love you buddy we've been long time friends since 
we were in church, grew up in the in the faith assembly of God, and he sent me uh, this guy right here. Take a look. Some interesting here. Uh, Bitcoin surges. Uh, oh, look, more money's coming. Right Woohoo! You're a beta male. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> Your blue pill Thank you. Life. Oh, you're watching. Send me a thousand dollars in donation right now, Bill. And, and Bill, I'm glad you're watching, buddy. I didn't think you tuned in. It's nice to see you in the chat. Yeah, my man, my man, Bill, uh, broke the news to me because I was balls deep in some Chinese pussy, watching Bling Empire and eating uh, some delicious food. Life is good. And then Bill texts me, says, "Dude, Bitcoin is pumping right now." And I was like, oh, "Okay, like you know." Maybe, you know, because Bill's just getting to it. So I assumed like Bitcoin would be like kind of like, oh, you know, maybe it's pumped 39, 40. He's excited. It's Monday morning. And then I picked up my phone and I was like, holy God, it's at $42,000. And um, and then he sent me these articles. And here's the reason why Bitcoin surges above 44,000 to record high. I'm going to add that in there. After Elon Musk Tesla buys $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. Fred Rico sent the right amount. He said he sent 70 bucks now total. Japanese yen. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> Bill's dying right now. Don't die, Bill, because you got to pick me up. Bill's picking me up in a private plane. My man Bill is a genius, dude. He, he He's a fighter pilot in uh, in one of the branches of the military. And uh, he, he flies some pretty badass uh, equipment, to say the least. Okay. And uh, yeah, he sent me this. And I'm just saying, man, um, I'm telling you guys, I am telling you. I, I, I was on, uh, Charlie spent the night at my house uh, because we wanted to watch the football game. Uh, Super Bowl comes on in Tokyo Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. So he lives, you know, he lives an hour and a half away So because he, he moved to Chiba for a bit. So um, instead of, you know, taking an hour and a half train in the morning, he just came over Sunday. We, we, chung, we hung out. Uh, we set up some MetaMask stuff. We got involved with uh, getting some Celsius on board and, and crashed, you spend the night here. And then uh, we we did Moon Gang this morning from my place as well. You, if you watched Charlie's show, you saw Moon Gang. And so, um, yeah, man, it's... It, you guys don't donate $100 Thank you, Rich right Hatfield. Now. You're a beta male. One second. You're a cuck. You're a blue pill for life. <laughs> better send me a thousand dollars in donation right now rich, <laughs> and rich hadfield with the 299 super stickers thank you so much it sends a, a kawaii fox there thank you thank you all i'm gonna say is this mark it down right here right now okay ethereum's going to ten thousand dollars possibly by december uh march we're gonna see some serious serious shit just get ready guys get ready Get ready, and if you're not getting in Charlie's course, uh, you're you're screwed. Um, I'm gonna make a plethora of money um, when the crypto's markets. You know, I went out and made this shirt today because I just knew that. I mean, one, I am a crypto degenerate, and then two, I just know that. Oh man, we are just getting started. I'm thrilled. But anyways, let's let's go back to the today's show topic, shall we? Uh, let's pull up the whiteboard. Get back to uh, how to lose how loser lives his life part three. So okay, so now we did twenty up to twenty five. We did eighteen to twenty five, right? Or was it eighteen? No, I think it was eighteen to tw no twenty two to twenty seven was the last one. Okay, now here we go. All right, so now uh, we're gonna do th this one twenty eight to thirty five. Okay. 28 to 35. Oh boy, oh boy. This is where this is like, you know. 28 to 35 in your life, it, it's like it's like the empire strikes back, okay? And a new hope was 18 to 22, right? And oh, we'll give it we'll we'll even say 18 to 27. That was like a new hope. Give me some Star Wars analogies here. And um, you know, if you if you play your cards right, a new hope is like sets you a solid foundation. Okay, eighteen to thirty five can either be very 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 depressing, right? Like the Empire Strikes Back, everything just ends in tragedy. Okay, and unfortunately for the average loser, this is this is one of the final nails in the coffin. This eight this twenty eight to thirty five really really solidifies their how how permanently fucked they are like just it, like if it is the final 
nail in the coffin to let them know, okay, you are a loser. Now, if you're like 36 and you wake up, and you want to change your life, that is absolutely possible. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying for the average person, they do some stuff that's compounded over the course of their lifetime that getting out of it is going to be really, really tough. And to top it off, um, it'll take a lot of time and, you know, statistics and luck are not on their side, but guys that are super determined, there's a guy named Kevin in my community. I mean, hell, even Tarl, Tarl lost a hundred pounds since joining body language mastery, hundred pounds. That's a full person. And he was working out with Myron Gaines and, um, you know, so proud of the guy, just fantastic individual, super smart guy. Um, he, he really, he really, he really did the uh, term around, um, you know, so, you know, uh, we'll, we'll just jump right into it. So it's going to get, it gets a little gloomy, but we, you know, get to keep it real. Okay. So now 20 to 35. So, all right. So now if they're 20 to 35, they're typically now going to be a permacog in their company, right? You know, they're going to be uh, what I call a permacog. All right. And that means they're going to be a cog forever in the wheel of the corporate cycle. The permacog is just the employee who is just, he's not that good, right? He's, well, let's see, he's not great, right? Not terrible. He's just towing the line right in the middle. Kind of like Ryan Stone's YouTube channel. Just like, just middle of the road. <laughs> just like, if you want your daily dose of mediocrity. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I love Ryan. I just love Ryan. No, Ryan is the Jordan Schlansky Schlansch of this show, okay? Uh, I'm Conan and Charlie's Andy Richter. <laughs> um, but, you know, they they become this, this middle of the road kind of person. Permanently a cog in the... Um, machine and you know 28 if you if you're not taking care of your health um you know by 28 it's um you know you're already the the average american male right now at 28 if he is like not health conscious at all just like the typical kind of fat american he's floating anywhere between 210 to 230 right now at 28, starting point. Okay. Now, this, in regards to fat, um, this is anywhere between 60 to 80 pounds of excess fat traveling on the body at the moment. Okay. Uh, also at 18, at eight, or excuse me, 28 to 35, you start to notice your first slowdown. Okay. Uh, and everything slows down. Okay. Uh, the fat burning ability of your body slows down because your metabolism gets, uh, completely stunted as you age, okay? Your, your fat burning goes down. Your healing speed goes down, all right? I need to buy like a little, uh, a writing pad. I think, did they have that? Somebody tell me, can I buy a writing pad and just put it on my, on my desk and just write this out? I think that would be so much faster and cooler to be honest with you. Did Oxy says, did you have a slowdown at 24? Not excited for that. I did have a slowdown and I thought it wasn't going to happen to me either. Oh man, the slowdown is real. You got to take care of yourself as you get older, boys. You know, <clears throat> so the slowdown is real. Uh, the slowdown is real. The healing speed goes down. Okay. Now, as you get older and you take care of yourself, the the effects of the fat burning going down and he, the healing speed going down this is uh this is not as drastic as a person who doesn't take care of themselves right so they don't take care of themselves uh the fat burning ability speed it's going to be even worse right 
the more fat you have on your body, the uh, harder it is to get fat off. Healing speed goes down. That You know what that means? That also means for this typical idiot, because we're going to talk about this. Like this weird A. Oh, my God. My perfectionist nature will not allow that. Okay. The hangover recovery time, okay, goes up. So they're already being losers because they're they we're gonna copy this down because now they they become like you know, uh, the it's the last party stage. I can tell you now, guys. Honestly, at thirty five years old, and working in nightclubs for four years, and going to nightclubs around the world and all this shit, I officially hate nightclubs. Like, I'll go to a craft cocktail lounge, bar, as long as the music's not blasting. But, I mean, for me, I just, it's, I find it as a time suck. I find it a, a, a health suck. Um, I don't need to take girls for dates there. I mean, I could, but why? Um, and then, you know, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm, I just turned 35. I've been over it for a couple years now, but I'm, like, now sol solidly over it. Like, there, the probability of me going to clubs this year is, is very low. Oh, I just realized I'm, I'm blocking the screen here. Uh, let me let me go here. Let me kill my. Here we go. No need for my ego on on screen today. Even though I have my fucking awesome crypto degenerate shirt on. Um. So this is the last party stage, and and these believe me, these guys will party. They party to the brains, uh, splatter. Okay. So now your hangover recovery time has gone from you know the next day to two to three days. So what happens, right? That means drink Friday night after they go to happy hour and, and eat their 34 to 4,000 calories. Drink Friday. And then you recover by Sunday. So now your weekend, which could be uh, dedicated to having uh, productive things go on in your life, right? You are not working on a side business. You're not going to the gym. Um, you are not taking action on any uh, escape plans, as I like to call them, to escape from the financial system. I think the largest and biggest plan, ever, the biggest, uh, the biggest fucking stupid thing all men do is they don't set out to become masters of money. They don't set out to... Go to this, okay. Let me get some serious talk with you guys. All right, a lot of you guys don't, um, you don't fucking take the goddamn seriousness of money seriously, and you, your guys have a emotionally abusive relationship with money. Okay, you feel like money is abusive and money it just beats you up and leaves you, and it's just like in this, this you know scarcity mindset relationship it's like it's like a dude that's in, in a relationship with a toxic uh bpd girl and he's blue pill and he's like oh baby i, I just want to you know he'll, he'll cult you know he'll um he'll sell out on multiple aspects of his life he'll fucking coddle to her he'll do he'll he'll take bad deals he'll do whatever he can just to keep it that's how a lot of people think about money, right? And um, people get people get really uncomfortable when you talk about money, or like when you want to talk about money, right? People who have no drive. If you're a man and you want to hang around me, like believe you me, we're gonna talk about sorting out your finances, how to do proper tax. Uh, what is it called? Not and it's not tax evasion because that's uh, illegal. Tax aversion, right? We teach the art of tax aversion. If you read the movie, uh, if you read the book, Tax Free Wealth. That right there is a fantastic book that teaches you a lot about tax and how to save money and make money by allocating your resources uh, and assets correctly, right? So another thing is uh, that's what this person does here. They 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 don't uh, they don't take the seriousness of getting their finances together, right? This person, twenty eight to thirty five, they don't have their finances together. They probably are not saving any money. They're probably still massively in debt from student loans. Right, and they don't have a grand escape plan. They're not. They're not shooting for middle management. They're not shooting to go for the top of the company. This is just the average uh, run-of-the-mill guy. You know what I mean? 
and it's uh it's it's devastating it's devastating because this is happening everywhere it's devastating for them quite i mean it's not devastating for me because uh this is my competition and this is your competition if you're working as hard as me if you're smart as me and you're dil- and, and i'm not even that smart i'm just really diligent and i have tenacity I, i'm very diligent and i have tenacity okay diligence and tenacity they will get you a lot of things in life they'll get you the women you want they'll get you the body you want they'll get you the money you want but a lot of people just don't believe in themselves a lot of people just don't they don't try they don't even think to try it's just i i can't understand i cannot come to a logical conclusion as to why you should not prioritize getting your finances sorted out in your life as a man right why would you not prioritize that it's literally the one of the most important things that you're going to deal with for your, the rest of your life and all you gotta do is just sit out and do it I'm actually, it's funny, I'm watching, uh, now that I started talking about money a little bit, it's funny, I'm watching the viewership uh, trickle off, right? And it's fine, I don't care. Um, because, you know, it's this talk is not for everybody. So people get, you see, it just you, the, the viewership here alone just shows you, like, people, they get uncomfortable when you want to talk about money. They get uncomfortable having these money co- problems. They get uncomfortable talking about the fact that they don't have money. They get uncomfortable talking about the fact that they don't know how to acquire money or, or make a business or start a side hustle or strive for excellence. Why not? Why not? There is no logical conclusion that you can come to that would make any sense. I mean, sure, you, you could say like, you know, well, you know, I, I you can go to the existential route like, oh, you know, I just want to live my life experiencing things and experiencing life and, you know, work for a little bit and blah, blah, blah. But what if you hit by a bus? Like you can't go to the to the hospital. And be like, oh, well, I was just experiencing life, and so can you like just like pay for my fucking bell, bills and pay for my medical treatment shit? And uh, do I want a world that is like that? Yeah, I want a free medical system. I want all that, but that's not the world we live in, okay? And you're gonna make a lot of money. You're gonna make a lot of fucking progress in life by fucking living in goddamn reality. That's the fucking truth. That's why all these these fucking SJWs that are infiltrating these companies. I saw this shit on the Super Bowl. The stupid M and M's. I'll I'm never buying M and M's again. M and M's can you kiss my fucking red pilled ass? All right. When they're like, when a, some fucking simp has a bag of M and M's and he hands it to a girl and he says, "Sorry for mansplaining." Guess what, you stupid shit bags? Your company's gonna lose money because of that. Get woke, go broke. All right. All these fucking people that want to add, add, like, inject these non-realistic principles in business, they're getting punished financially. Look at the fucking feminists, what they did with Star Wars. You literally tanked Star Wars, and a man had to come back and save it all. Thank you, John Favreau. Thank you, Dave Filoni. Okay? Get woke, go broke. And guess what? This cancer culture shit's coming to an end. This is not, they're not going to be able to do this shit anymore. Technology is traveling and evolving way faster. Bitcoin just hit 44000 fucking dollars, okay? That is fuck you money. Okay? That is ultra fuck you money. Can't touch it. Can't cancel it. Can't tell me nobody don't want it because they all fucking do. Buy Bitcoin, shitbags. I've been telling you since 2019. said every man should own one Bitcoin. Now look at this. Ha. Huh. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I need to have some fucking aggressive makeup sex b- before every show. <laughs> Love it. Get what go broke. You don't live in reality. You are fucked. Let's go back to our loser. Um, you know. So this is this is this is the this is the ba- this is the backbone of it. Permacog. Slow down. Last party stage. Okay. You think this guy's getting any pussy? Nope. Let's go to the dark side of it. Who wants to get really fucking dark? Let's do it. All right. If you guys don't donate $100 right now, you're a beta male, go. you're a cuck, you're blue Thank pill you. for life. You better send me $1,000 in donation right now. <laughs> and, and My man Federico Monticelli with the seven 
1738 Japanese yen. It's about $17.38. Thank you so much. Neil Machiavelli says, turning 28 in a month. It's okay, buddy. I hope you're living the life of a winner. Because if you're living the life of a winner, let me tell you something. I'm 35, guys. My life is fan fucking tastic. Fantastic. The biggest struggle in my life at this moment is I wanted to get a King Charles Cavalier, but I realized they shed a lot, and that kind of broke my heart because I just can't have dog hair all over the place. Happy, happy is turning one years old in two days, and I'm in doggy heaven. We are in a good place in our relationship right now, and uh, I thought about getting this other one, but I just saw the hair everywhere. I don't know. I just can't. I don't know if I can deal with it. But the Maltese, they don't shed. But anyways, that's me at 35. These are my problems. Uh, my life is a mess, says Neil Machiavelli. Well, sit down, shut the fuck up, and pay attention. And don't spaz out in the chat. Take some fucking notes. All right? So now we have the guy who is getting sex versus no sex. However, they have one thing in common. They are. Can I do a big one? Let's make this nice and pretty. Believe it or not, I'm walking on Memphis. I don't know where I heard that song, but it's been on my head all day. I think it was the Super Bowl. They are both blue pilled. Okay, so uh, let's say this is a guy that he has like some sex life, right? He has a decent sex life and, uh, you know, he's okay. He's a typical blue pill chump. He gets pussy like maybe once every three months, right? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Is Super Bowl? Why did I say Memphis? I don't know. Um, guess what? 18 to 35, he probably falls victim to... Marriage. Dun, dun, dun. You're fucked. Right? This guy? Porn addiction. Right? Fall into bad habits, man. This leads to cam girls right depression okay money troubles Okay, because he's he's dumping all the money into the cam girls, um, you know, and also because he's watching porn, he's doing this, he's depressed, and he's also jerking off a lot, which gives you erectile troubles, for the permanent ones, dude. Really fucks you up. How do you think I know this? I've seen thousands of men suffer with this shit. Tons of men come to me in the community and talk about it too. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and to be honest, this is the better situation right here. <laughs> this is the better situation. Because this can be easily repaired, right? Even the broken dick. Because the guy, you know, you're watching so much porn. You're watching so much like degenerate porn to top it off, right? You're watching like mad degenerate porn and like you keep on getting more and more and more involved in porn. You have to like watch more and extreme stuff and more crazy stuff. And you start building up these like unrealistic sexual expectations of women. And, um, you know, it's just fucking, it's just, you know, Jesus Christ, man. 
it's just it's a bad bad thing to go down because you you could start i mean that this is people that it could get really dark i came to say how dark it gets on the stream here because i might get like attacked by by the rainbow people the alphabet people they're coming for me i better put on some like really unfashionable clothes to like repel them away <laughs> uh this just sends your life into complete shit guys complete shit all right. The fact that you're here watching me on a Monday morning, it's Money Monday. Okay. Happy Money Monday, motherfucker. Wake up. Wake up. Get out there and kick life's teeth right in. Okay. You get out there and you crush it today. Fuck everybody else who's not on your plan. If you don't have a goal, make one. All right. Yeah. You hate your job. Whatever. You got to make money. Get in there. Handle shit like a man. Men don't do what they just want to do only. That's fucking for women. Men do what needs to be done. Okay, they run towards their problems. You're gonna have to go to work anyways. Fuck it, dude. Best job ever, right? Hate your pay, start looking for other job. Get a better skill, right? Money Monday. Welcome. Welcome to the big boy world. Nobody gives a fuck about you, by the way. Nobody. Nobody cares. So if your life sucks, you better do something to fix it today. You better start today. So porn addiction, cam girls, depression, money problems, erectile dysfunction. And also it gets even fucking worse. Uh, sometimes this doesn't go directly to cam girl, but then it goes to prostitution. And also the most modern phenomenon today, when they don't have sex and they don't develop properly with their emotions and their emotional relationship with women, they become a... simp and at this age if you become a simp you are simp for life most likely simp for life son for life life with a y simping All right, Dimitri, we don't need to go that. Sh Dimitri, why? we don't need to go that that dark. Please delete that comment. Both of those, the the R one and the 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 projectile verse one. Thank you for your kindness. Um, but yeah, man, some dark shit. I know some guys that are like this right now. And you know why they get no sex? Because they are fat and broke. Basically, a death sentence for your life, your sex life in 2021. If you're fat and broke, I hope you believe in Jesus because you're going to need some kind of delusion to come for you. <laughs> you are gonna need that. Not not good. Not good. I almost need to turn on the Bitcoin video again to like get pop, get get amped for the uh for the next the next section here. Okay. It was funny as like again, this is the best best situation. This is the best situation right here. Woof. Marriage. Let's talk about the real slavery. Corporate slavery, all that shit. Debt slavery. No, no, no. The real slavery as a man is getting married in the West. You get married in the West, brother man? You uh you got to get some yoga lessons so you can be real flexible. And then you can stretch down and put your head in between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. Because you are properly fucked. Properly. Okay? Marriage. Let's talk about it. Marriage does this. It puts government in your relationship, first of all. Government is now number one in your life. You have to appease to the government now legally 
through this fucking marriage comp- contract, okay? Right? And uh, Parashiv, Parashiv Valentin says, I love this episode. I just love it because I know no way in hell I'll be like that. I like you. You can come over and fuck my sister. I like you. Name the movie. Uh, I like you. Good attitude. Good attitude. Oh, man, life is good. Thank God I don't have to deal with this shit in America. Marriage in the United States. Government number one. Guess who's number two in your life now? Woman. Your wife. Okay, let me show you where you're... And then guess who's number three now? If you have kids, guess what? You have to do it with kids, too. Child. And the only reason I say child is number three, because, you know, blah, 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 child are better than get a child or number one, kids first. Yeah, I get it, motherfucker. But child is number three because the child can't divorce you and take you to the courts and literally put you in jail just for not being a slave to her, you know, emotional uh, whim. Full metal jacket, correct. I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. Big Daddy MLD needs a new chair. I'm going to punch my former interior designer right in his face. This chair is terrible. I can feel my snap, my spine snapping. Um. So, and then here, here's, here, now here's you. Okay. The man. Number four. Okay. So basically, he has to do all the work. To make this person happy, this person happy, and this person happy. Okay. Now, let's be honest. When America, with marriage, you had a 50% chance you're going to get a divorce. Okay. 50%. If you had like a, a, a slice of pizza in front of me, and you're like, okay, you're going to eat this pizza. But this is a 50% chance that when you eat this pizza, your heart is going to explode instantaneously and you will die. I would throw that pizza right in that person's face. Okay? No, thank you. But blue pill dudes cannot get sex, so they fucking compromise to trade marriage for sex, and that puts government number one woman who number two but she's the because she's a direct representative of tattletailing to the government in his life now the woman rules over the man and the woman is ruling over the man okay and then the man has some authority over the child but the woman has the ultimate saying and who is a woman who rules over the woman okay her emotions. Okay. So basically you're a slave to these emotions. And when you're a slave to emotions, you're going to be poor. You're going to be fat. And you're going to be unhappy. This is why men typically have their shit together more than women do. Men are less emotional than women. Okay, women are run by their emotions. It's just how they are. It's nothing wrong with that. Just certain certain mindsets are conducive to certain behaviors and outcomes. And the way women are operating, take a look at it. Two thirds United States school, uh, student loan debt held by chicks, fattest women in in human history, American women, right? Uh, most useless careers, women. Okay, most useless degrees that can't get jobs, women. Right. Most credit card debt. Are we seeing a pattern here? Okay, can't tame their emotions. They go to the doctor. I feel sad. I feel depressed. I feel blah blah blah. Number one consumers of pharmaceutical drugs in America, women. And the average guy, the average man. 
doesn't fucking stand up to her and put an end to the shit. He helps her chase her fucking emotional dragons her entire life, okay? Okay. This is unless you're Lucario. I'm not talking about Mr. Lucario. Mr. Lucario is an above average exceptional man. I respect Mr. Lucario. I have his book in my nightstand, How to Have Sex with Two Women in One Day. And, uh, you know, this is the average man. This is the average man. And, uh, yeah, I told you today's episode is going to get real deep and real dark because, like, this is the final stage. And I'm not even done. Like, I have so much more to say. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I know I know somebody married to this chick, right? And she's just never happy. Okay. Addicted to CNN. All she does for the last four years is just like, I hate Trump. I hate Trump. I hate Trump, right? Doesn't have a job. Doesn't work. Husband pays for everything, okay? Life is like completely on easy mode. Completely on easy mode. So what does she do? Okay, well, I don't feel attracted to you anymore. So like, I want to get a divorce. So they get, they, they don't get a divorce, they get separated, okay? And then they get separated and guess what? Now they're apart for a year. And they're like, okay. Well, the guy's like, well, you know. And then and the wife's unhappy. And she's like, well, I'm just depressed, so I just need to take, I need to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to the doctor and, and see what's wrong. Okay. Doctor prescribes her Lexapro. Take this Lexapro. You're going to be all right. Now she's walking around drugged up all the time. Decides she doesn't want to live out on her own. After she moved out, he paid for the moving company. He paid for the fucking rent of her whole place the entire year. Just chasing her fucking emotional dragons. Comes back after a year. Like, okay, I'll, I'll be with you again. Gets back with him. Takes her back. Okay. What do you think happens? A couple years go by. Everything's good. Next time. Oh, my God. I just feel I need to reset. I just, I'm not happy with you. I got I just don't feel it anymore. Blah, 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 blah. I want to separate again. Separates again. Moves out. Decides she wants a dog. <laughs> Can't take care of the dog after that. <laughs> Has to pawn the dog off on her kid. Gives it to her son. Can you take care of the dog for me? Sorry, I made a mistake. Well, great. I just got to carry around this 10 to 15 year liability with me now. You can drop it off at the shelter, but I guess, you know, they're, they're like, well, no, she still wants to see the dog. Was it, what really should have happened is the man should have put some bass in his voice and be like, hey, how would you shut up? Stop chasing happiness. It's an unrealistic expectation to be fucking happy all the time. When you feel like shit, be happy you're feeling something because one day the lights are going to go off and they're not going to come on. You're going to feel nothing. Feel sad, fucking embrace it. Flow with it. You feel happy, ride that motherfucking wave to the top. Feel angry? Go. Get angry. Go fucking do some boxing. Do some jujitsu. Go punch something. You know, in a dojo. Don't go beat somebody's ass unless they engage. Unless they're, they're okay with you sparring them. Then beat their fucking ass. Okay? That's the emotional... That's the proper way to deal with emotions. Not endlessly chasing happiness through things and actions and everything. <clears throat> it's just and, and this is the reality for 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 some of these guys okay let's break down the divorce time now woman gets fed up right if the man is not slaving away his entire life to appease the woman and the gov excuse me and the government coke zero is coming back up for me now you're trying to make these people happy your entire life and guess what you're just cog in the wheel you work just to be a slave to turn over your money to the woman to the child wife's probably cheating on you because you're blue pill when women hate blue pill guys right and if you're lucky, hopefully, if you're lucky, you get a divorce when you're young, 28 to 35. Never let it happen again. 
So let's talk about all the other trouble sex leaves to when a guy simps out. Okay. By the way, you want to hear something funny? Those losers uh, on that black pill stream, <laughs> one of the guys got fucking robbed in the streets, right? And this guy used to sit around and talk so much shit about me. Instead of going to like a jujitsu class and or a kickboxing class or doing something productive with yourself, he got fucking robbed in the street and he couldn't do shit. He just took it like a pussy. And then he came on the stream. He's like, I'm so angry. I'm so frustrated. I don't feel like a man. Wah, 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 wah. On that young loser path, man. On that young loser path are those fucking losers that sit around and talk about, uh, Whatever, fucking banging prostitutes in Mexico. Oh, man, what a bunch of, what a motley crew of losers. That was real. I personally loved watching that little kid kind of cry on the stream. 24 years old, 22 years old, you can't fucking put your fist up and defend yourself. You deserve to get robbed. You deserve to get robbed. If you're, if you're a man out there and you can't fight, I don't care how much fucking weights you lift in the gym. I don't give a shit how much you fucking squat. If you can't throw a jab, a right straight, defend a takedown, do a takedown, okay, and and put them into a rear naked choke, if you can't do those things, then, well, you have what's coming to you as the world kind of gets increasingly more crazier and violent in certain aspects, right? Obviously, we're more peaceful now, but af after last year, you saw a really dark side of humanity. And, uh, you know, every man, too, especially men in America, anywhere, if you have access to guns, you need to know how to sh load a gun. You need to know how to fire a gun. You need to know how to put a safety on a gun. Okay. You need to know how to load bullets into a magazine. Okay. Because not even that you need to use it, but if you were to encounter a situation where a gun was present and you don't know how to use a gun, you're just as much as a liability as somebody who doesn't know how to use, uh, doesn't have a gun. You're more dangerous than a crazy person because you could fucking shoot somebody, shoot yourself. Okay. It's pathetic if you're a man, you don't know how to use a gun. Go figure it out today. Have your grandpa, your uncle. Your military friend figured out. Okay. It's fantastic. Side side note, but yeah, karma's a bitch, motherfucker. Suck it. Sit around crying all about that. <laughs> I'll come rob you next, you little pussy. <laughs> oh man, I love being alive. Uh so Let's talk about the divorce. So you sell out for sex, right? I'm cleaning this up with my OCD. Um, you know, now you're gonna get a divorce, right? And you're you're in a tough spot. Let's let's map out the divorce in the worst case scenario, okay? So now you're getting divorced, okay? There are three terrible things that can happen to you, okay? And they are 50% asset loss, a lot of these idiots are stupid enough to share credit cards with their wives or put their wives as primary card holders on credit card accounts and all that stuff. Wives lock them out of their credit cards, lock them out of their accounts, rob them blind. And that's assuming they don't go the legal route. But if they go the legal route, guess what? If you don't have an amicable divorce, 50% asset loss minimum. Okay? Your house is gone. Fucking car is gone. You have to, div you have to lose everything, 50%. Okay? Chaniel says, need to get into jujitsu. Uh, into jujitsu. Have a black belt in karate, but it's not very useful in combat. It's, hey, listen, if you can spar and move quickly on your feet and keep the fight standing and, and keep your hands up and you know the principles of throwing a jab right straight, honestly, if you really want to defend yourself in a street fight in, regard, in regards to fighting, uh, all you really need to do is know how to throw a proper jab and a proper right straight. That'll that'll keep you alive, okay? Quarter of my lip is peeling. All right, drive me nuts. There we go. Um, it's like feel it flipping around there. It gets so dry in the winter here in Japan. 
my scalp gets dry, my my nose gets dry, my lips get dry. Winter needs to be over. I'm I'm so over it. Uh, 50% asset loss, right? And then also you have to do alimony payments. So depending on how lo long you're married, sometimes alimony is lifetime, okay? Alimony is basically monthly payments to the wife, ex-wife, because like they still have like the sexist rules that are like, oh, women are weak and can't take care of themselves, so you need to pay alimony. So you're giving your wife monthly payments, right? And some of these payments are up to, you know, fucking $50,000 for some of these celebrities paying their wives alimony, $50,000 a, a month for getting piped down. That's the fucking, that's right there, getting piped down. And guess what? Now you got to pay alimony. Sometimes years, sometimes lifelong. I mean, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay. <clears throat> and here's the beauty of this is the most beautiful one. Child support. And I'm just, I'm mapping out the divorce now, okay? The divorce can happen anywhere in your life, 28 to 50 or to all the way in your 70s. It can happen anytime. They can pull the rug out whenever they want. I'm just covering the details of it now. Start the Monday off with a nice positive attitude. Do not ever get fucking married in America because you'd be a goddamn fool to do so, okay? Child support. Okay, let's talk about child support. So child support, all right, now this is a percentage of your income. That's all it is. Percent of income, all right? There's no allotted amount sanctioned by the government. It's not like, okay, $5,000 a month per child or something like that, okay? So some of these uh, celebrities, uh, long story, I'll tell you a quick story. One time I met Blake Griffin, right, an NBA superstar. He was, uh, this was right after he won the slam dunk contest after he jumped over the Kia and he slam dunked it, right? And so he was on the top of the 180 Grey Goose Lounge. And I saw him there in the VIP, right? And, you know, I've been pimp my whole life. And so I saw him. And uh, when I saw him, he was there. And he had he had this like hot blonde chick in the fucking VIP with him, and he had like the he had the bottle of Grey Goose, and he was like pouring it for her, and mixing it. And then he he was looking, he's like, you see, I'm a gentleman, and he was like looking for validation in this chick. And I just wanted to go over there and slap him in the face, be like, dude, you're Blake Griffin. Get like stop this shit. You're a fucking global celebrity. When he slammed dunk over that Kia, he was so popular in Korea as well. All right? So now what happens? We're there. He's simping out for this chick. This is just a glimpse into his future. Now Blake Griffin pays $100,000 in child support. And you might be thinking, wow, $100,000 in child support per year is insane. That's a discount for fucking Blake Griffin because he's paying $100,000 in child support every month. Every month, okay? Because child support is a percentage of your income. So guess what? Blake Million has a blank, uh, let's say Blake Griffin has a 12.1, a let's just for simplicity's sake, right? Uh, a 12.1 million per year, right, at the time. Guess what? 10% of that is uh, 1.2 million, right? And that is divided by 12. Okay? 12 months. Are you really telling me you need $100,000 a month to raise the kid? Are you feeding the kid Bitcoin? Is the kid on like an all Bitcoin diet? Bitcoin and gold flakes? And guess what? It's per kid. Okay, it can go up to per kid. He got lucky. I, I think he just has one kid. I don't know exactly. All right. And his 38 million contract is up after this year. He ain't getting 38 million. I tell you that. He's on the tail end of his career now. 
The shit broke the man. Now you got to pay it 12 months. Guess long. And then child support, how long do you pay it? Well, guess what? If you, uh, if you have a five-year-old, guess what? You're paying that for 13 years until the kid turns 18. Okay. Now these guys are getting sex and get married. Typically they do uh, ascend in the corporate ladder because there's a little bit more pressure on them at home from the woman. Um, and so they do amount themselves a little bit only to get bled out later when this happens. Okay. And so you guys don't, don't oh, we got a, we got a don't right now. You're a beta male. Thank you. You're a cuck. You're a blue pill for life. <laughs> You better send me a thousand dollars in donation right now. You know, and, and it's funny, man. I know this is a gloomy episode. I know, I know, I I know. It's not like my typical upbeat, good messaging, but this is just needs to be said because there's a lot of people who think they're okay, and they're living like this, and it's not okay. And the crypto reaper it calleth, and that is me, and I'm here to to take your bitch assness away. I'm here to kill it. Living like this is oh boy. Oh boy. You know, the Mandalorians say this is the way. I'll tell you, this is not the way here, okay? Fred Friedman Sowell says, In 2019, I lost 35 pounds. In 2020, I got my first VP-level job and made 165 to 175K. Now I want to start getting second passports. Still sad Trump lost. I'm, I am sad too. Big Daddy Trump and me have been friends for a long time. I was, I'm was i a Trump hipster. I loved Donald Trump before he was a big president. I went to Waikiki uh, uh, Trump Tower in 2014. I went inside. It was beautiful. I was just like, Trump is the man. I was reading Art of the, Art of the Deal at the time. Um, you know, great guy. Dude, Miss Big Daddy Trump. Sign me some more stimulus checks, Daddy. I need them. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Paul George is next to be taken to cleaners. <laughs> Bet you. Sometimes red pills are bitter, bitter uh, to take medicine. Yeah, no, it's true. Guys, this happens every single day, man. This is this happens every single day. This is not this is not like some rarity, man. Okay. Paul George. Paul George married a stripper this summer. Simping ain't pimping, man. Simping ain't easy. So now you're paying child support for the kids, thirteen years, right, dude? Hell, even if the kid is like, you get a, you get a fucking divorce, and the kid's fourteen, that's still four years of payments. Okay. And here's the thing: if your wife, your ex-wife is like a real turbo whore, okay, she, if any point she feels she needs more child support, she can take you to court. At any point, she feels she needs more more money. And then she needs you to pay for the legal fees. You got to pay for her lawyer and your lawyer. Okay. Oh, happy days. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm covering the, uh, the court. Here we go. I'll just uh, boom. Boom, there we go. See? Court and legal fees. Even if you're like this, okay, and you're this guy, this is why I said the guy who is lonely and, and uh, pathetic was better than this situation because guess what? If this guy all of a sudden takes the red pill... about women and government and money and reality, okay? Guess what? Alimony is still there. Child support is still there. Asset loss is still there. Divorce threats, still there. Okay? Drop those red pills in the chat. You know how to do it. If you want those red pill emojis, click on that link right there. Sign up, join the Hot Dude Army. Nine ninety nine a month to get all the custom emojis that the black sheep and all my ultra chad dudes have in the chat. Uh, 
Get those red pills, boyos. Put those red pills. Red pill the world. Red pill the chat. I want to see a wall of red pills. Dedicate that wall of red pills to Big Daddy Trump. You know? Even if, if you take the red pill, right? You just, you're not going to go to the judge and be like, well, actually, judge, I read Rolo Tomasi and now I'm not paying shit. He's like, all right, take this motherfucker to jail, okay? You know, um, Nero Machiavelli says, now I don't feel bad about being a loser. Never married, no kids. Whew, you can still turn it around. See, the guy who's 28 to 35, if he has a good friend who helps him or he just gets, you know, he hits a breaking point because some men do change. And I believe the red pill is spreading and more and more men are waking up, okay? Um, you know, if, if he is to snap out of it, guess what? All he is is sexless, right? Dude, the easiest way to get more sex, guys, is that simple. Don't be fat. Have some decent fashion. Make a little bit of money and go talk to a bunch of girls. It's just that easy. Have a plan in place. Girls are giving out sex like hotcakes right now, mate. Hotcakes. Girls are dishing out sex. Okay? What are you waiting for? You know what I mean? Think about it. Think about it. Look at those red pills coming in. Yeah, it's just sad. Sad, but again, it is sad. But you can't save them, right? You can't save them. Some of these guys don't want to be saved. So they're your com competition, right, in the world. You got to do Law of 48 Powers. Crush your competition totally. Just gotta be this is the way it is. This fucking twenty five to thirty twenty eight to thirty five year old dude is sitting across from me at a table. We have to negotiate some prices, negotiate some contracts. I'm getting this idiot to pay the highest fee because his wife bullies him around. Guess what? You think he's gonna stand up in the boardroom if I was in the corporate world like I used to? I used to make these Japanese people sign the most ridiculous contracts. All ethical, all done by the book. Just, you know, my recruitment fee was 40%. Anybody in the industry knows. Federico knows. Federico, I'll get these motherfuckers to sign 40% contracts all the time. It was fantastic. I got a guy to pay 40% contract, 40% on a contract and then pay maximum salary to this chick that I was uh, got getting the job for. Because I didn't care. Corporations, they, it was a medical device company. They have infinite amounts of money. And this chick was genuinely a nice girl. And the more money I made her, the bigger my fee was, the more my commission was. So guess what? I was doing the Robin Hood thing, right? This guy, I, I remember I sat down with the president of this medical device company. And I thought to myself, hey, he's a nice guy, but he's kind of a lay down. And uh, I'm going to make this fucking guy pay as much as I can get him to pay so I could get to the top of those rankings in the company because I'm a very competitive guy. It's, you know, that's business. That's business. You think Amazon and Rakuten are like best buddies? Look what look what Apple just did to Facebook. The iOS fourteen, I don't know, the iOS fourteen update stops all these uh, other companies from tracking your data. You have to exclusively give them uh, access to it now. Facebook can't track your data as much as uh, as it did before. Okay. You think Apple is just wanting to give its data away for free? No. It's protecting its users. Welcome to business. Welcome to the way fucking reality works. That's a loser to me. Okay? Which guy are you going to be? Which guy you want to be? If it's not, if you didn't like what you heard today, then you know what you got to do. That's the reality for a lot of people out there. It's a dark reality. And if you saw of any of these inside these these episodes up to now, you've seen all of these fucking red flags and you found some in yourself, don't try to ignore it. Look deeply at yourself. 
look ultra deep at yourself okay don't forget don't try to run away from your problems run to them head first because you know you got to pay your dues eventually Pay now, hard work and diligence, sort yourself out, or you pay later with your life, misery, enslavement, debt, you know, tons and tons and tons, okay? That's going to do it for us today, boys. Body Language Mastery, we're going live here with Aaron Clary and the private community. Come through. We're going to talk about how to get your money right, how to get your financial shit straight. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow with a close tomorrow. We're closing this out. Closing out the loser series tomorrow for sure. We're going to do 35 to 55 and then onward towards death. Um, but I can't wait to get to the winter stuff. The winter stuff is fantastic. We're going to get to that next week, okay? Because we're doing the closing the show tomorrow. And then Wednesday, we're going to talk about ball and ass crypto and how much jillions of dollars we're out here making. And then Thursday, Aaron Clary's coming on. We're going to talk about the financial situation, the money printing, all the insanity. Okay. And then Friday is um, is uh, free consultation Friday, and Saturday is dude party. So we're back in the swing of things over here at Hot Dude Headquarters. All right. Go watch this past weekend's episode of uh, Dude Party. Aaron Clary has a rant in there about Western women. It is beautiful. It is, we're going we're gonna to clip it. We've got to clip it. It's got to be clipped, man. It's so good. Um, you guys are the best. Love you all. Make money. Make muscles. Learn game. Peace out. And don't forget, we're going to the moon, baby.